Hello and welcome to Cinequest video. Today we're going to be discussing another film in the Pooniverse. It's the sequel to <laughs> the most terrible Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. So again, according to IMDb, um, the description mm -hmm. would be not wanting to live in the shadows any longer. Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Owl, and Tigger take their fight to the town of Ashdown, leaving a bloody trail of death and mayhem in their wake. Now, that's a very simple version of the story. There's a little, I feel there's a little bit more depth to this one than yeah, the previous um, film. Do you think it was like a soft reboot? Because it, it was. You know, from the, it was like basically I was, the first yeah. one. It was... Completely different, completely different uh, uh, set of actors. Probably the same guy doing doing uh, dressing as Pooh. I'm not sure. Uh, as far as the people in the costumes, I don't know if the people from the first film continued on to yeah. this one. But I will well, say this: the, I saw this film back in I believe it was March. All right, when it came to the theater for one day, and I just so happened to be off of work. And I just so happened to be free to go watch this film in the theater. And uh, I remember t I remember telling you, Roland, and unfortunately you missed it. You weren't able to see it. I did. I was uh, really irritated about that. It was literally like when you told me, I think we had, I was looking at the times, you know, in the theater. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it'll be, uh, uh, it was like during the week or something. And I yeah, saw it. Yeah, it was a I'm Wednesday. Like, oh, it's cool. It. I'll check it out on the weekend. Not thinking it was the only fucking day that yeah. it had aired. <laughs> I was so pissed because I was like, I just went for the weekend. It'll be cool. Like, no, did nope. not happen. I honestly thought I was going to have to wait until. Wasn't there like a rumor or a, a, some assumption that it wasn't going to be on available on streaming until like October? I thought it was like November that I read that initially, <laughs> but um, I guess it, it was earlier. So I guess good for us. Yeah, then. yeah. And that's why I was like, I was kind of bummed. And then when, you know, you you were like, oh, yeah, it's out already. And I was like, cool. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, yeah, here we, like here we are, <laughs> like God damn it. Uh, um, th this is this I'm is trying a brand to look new... up this dude real quick to see if he did the other. Uh, I don't think he did the first. The first no, coup, uh, the guy that. But like before we go, I just wanted to mention the guy's name Ryan Oliva or Oliva. He yeah. kind of looks like um. He kind of looks like is it is it Brian Thompson the fucking uh the villain from uh Cobra with the axe gang leader. Dude, I don't remember that at all. Yeah. With uh it's the fucking Axe Gang, the bald dude. He's also plays like Shao Kahn and fucking Mortal Kombat. Uh he's always known as a villain for the most part. Like he had like I think one or two TV uh series cameos where he's not, but like for the most part he was he was in like episodes of X Files. Like the, the guy's done so many many things. I I'm, sure you, you I, I'm pretty sure I've seen the guy, but it just doesn't ring a bell looking at the guy's picture. Oh, you mean the the Ryan Oliva? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So yeah. um, I I well, did want I did want to go over quickly um, yeah. my bit of theater experience. So I walked into the theater sure. uh, as the movie had started. Mind you, there were no trailers really to this other than the usual Cinemark I don't think nonsense. You know. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. No, you didn't go to the theater <laughs> to see this. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's why. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, Thanks, brain, brain You're coming in clutch for me there. Uh, so <laughs> the Scott Chambers, the guy that played Christopher Robin, and I believe it's the director, were actually speaking oh. to the audience and basically thanking them to come watch this movie, because apparently uh, Scott Chambers, uh, the guy who plays Christopher Robin, he and yes. uh, the director, they actually have made a slew of films uh, as of right now, and they're kind of partly responsible for bringing these properties back into like a, a horror type of thing. So mm -hmm. basically they were thanking the audience and uh, telling them what they're going to do with the Puniverse and all that kind of stuff. And then the film started, right? So <laughs> just a quick uh, extra layer to this movie. Uh, surprisingly, there is another layer is that Christopher Robin is kind of uh, dealing with the tragedy that happened in the Hundred Acre Wood massacre, which is in the, mm -hmm. the what happened in the previous film. But mm -hmm. that the movie that we saw, that we reviewed, is supposed to be the actual movie that was made of the actual tragedy, and like it's like some kind of like meta thing. Oh. So, in in the this film, they're actually watching the first movie, 
They're like, isn't that what happens? Yes. Uh, isn't that what right. happened to your yeah, friend or whatever? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's this, this whole extra layer of depth. So this Christopher mm. Robin is supposed to be the real Christopher Robin that uh, yeah. dealt with that particular event. And the town right. itself blames him as uh, the person who actually killed all these people because right. they didn't believe yeah, the story gets... of the actual Pooh character and he was, Piglet he, I don't who killed these he people. Went to, I don't think he went to... To court or anything like that like i think he was i don't think he was actually like f- like formally accused was, was no he's been he's been going to therapy and that's kind of like where we're introduced to this right. week for robin yeah. in his therapy session and he is a yes. he's a like a, he's a nurse and again the town still kind of snickers and back talks about him that he is a murderer and a killer and all that kind of stuff i mean like not kind of dude you, you remember like i mean uh they like graffitied up his car that he would just like gotten you know i think yeah, at one point yeah. he got he was i think he got a detailed or something as he's there in front of their house with the dad and the the friendo slash uh i guess um guy that did the work and like the guy just blinks and he's like oh shit like dude i didn't notice that like and i just finished working on this car like i'm sorry but i'm tired kind of like yeah uh because yeah like it was you know it's, they spray painted like what was it something it was murder they, yeah murder. i think they were just like murderer yeah. or something like that on there i forgot yeah but even when or he go away when he's gonna or... attend uh, attend a party later on in the movie um yeah they basically ca- they, they casually like mentioned like oh like no one really wants to be around someone who murdered something even though we know you didn't do it and he's he's like, uh he's uh, actually uh, very like jovial not jovial but like he's very nice about it the whole situation mm-hmm. yeah he just wants to be like he just wants to chill normal. and yeah, like, he wants to be normal. Even his his actual friends are like, no, we, we kind of want to like, you gotta go. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and he even gets um, he gets fired from his job because of all the backlash, hard. you know. And it, yeah, after he was just doing like, he, he apparently he was a very very good nurse. Yeah, he seemed to be. Um, one of the other things about the Christopher Robin character is that I think personally the uh, scott chambers i had seen him pr- just prior to watching this uh, back in march um i was given a an early screening of the film with uh, eddie izzard uh dr jekyll and oh, mrs hyde uh, yeah and uh, yeah, scott yeah. chambers plays a character in that film and one of the things that i did not i, I didn't like the movie uh, the dr jekyll and Mrs. Hyde, i know i had wanted was. to see that one like because i'd been hearing about it for a while and you kind of like stealth watched it and when i when i called you about it you were like no yeah don't watch it it sucks the <laughs> like, one it the one thing really the, the one thing i say i will say about that film and this one and the character or i really the guy, like scott the chambers. idea scott chambers is a pretty good actor Okay. I think he does a good job playing Christopher Robin and dealing with the trauma and the tragedy that he's been uh, dealing with for the past like year or so. And uh, I, I, I think he performed Christopher Robin pretty well. I mean, granted, this is a, a fake version of the Christopher Robin character. But uh, I mean, right. as far as him dealing with the, the tragedies that have befallen upon him and his friends and all the murders that have happened around him, and then all the harsh things that happened to him in this movie, I think he does a pretty good job selling the character of a, a very tragic character, <laughs> if you yeah, will. Um, I thought he had a sort of like very, uh, I don't know, like he's his face, like I don't know if that was intentional or if he like looks like that on purpose, but like the actor uh, who plays Christopher Robin in this movie, like he's got like a like a very like very soft rounded features mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but then also like dimples and all that and like he he kind of looks like a like a like a not really like a children's caricature <laughs> even though it he, does he seem looks, that he, way he because has, of how he, he exaggerated seems... his cheeks can like look but he looks very like like a like he came out of the the children's book kind of thing like it fits yeah, yeah. he fits he fits like i thought he fit the look of the character very well um he's kind of got to uh, He's kind of got a little bit of that uh, Martin Freeman sort of like childish <laughs> yeah, yeah. adult look. Yeah, he kind of has that look to him, for sure. That's so I was I was trying to look it up. I was like, oh, like the whole time I was watching, I was like, fucking Bilbo Baggins, my looking motherfucker <laughs> over here, fitting this, fitting in this role. I'm like, all right, yeah. But uh, 
Um, um so it, it was almost like sickly sweet though. That's that was why I was like really crediting it him uh with his you know his entire act or whatever with with again the character going through this absolutely fucking horrible goddamn thing <laughs> and having it follow him his entire goddamn life, uh kind of it. So I was like, all right, I don't I, I don't like you know a lot of this lovey dovey emotional crap kind of thing, but like it fit too well. And uh, so he seems like a wholesome character, you know, yes. who's dealing with this, yeah. this tragic shit, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. There was and another. Then it just gets even fucking gets worse. worse. Yeah, <laughs> there was <laughs> somehow. Obviously, from the the first film, uh, basically Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are seeking revenge on just people that are kind of hanging around yeah. the hundred hundred acre woods. And well, Chris, like, yeah, Chris, they've been they've well, been sort of hunted and right. Uh, well, Christopher Robin uh, was like they're kind of like their lifeline according to the first film, but this one kind of yes. turns that story on its head a little bit, where it gets even darker than the way yeah. they propose it in the first one. So it was real heavy on the cheese as far as the the oh, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the plot goes, which. But again, like it just fits so well because of how like I mean the context. This is for these fucking murder uh uh children's uh you know but uh um, there there's like almost like some uh dark characters. uh plot going on in the background which we find out in the film where do you want to yeah yeah we're, we're talking about it movie's been out for a long later. yeah right. movie's been out for a long time i mean people have a chance to watch it That's um true. so basically the backstory is <laughs> that children have gone missing throughout uh whenever christopher robin was young i think it was one of them was his brother yeah and we find out that yeah. there was this yep. like mad scientist who was melding together mm-hmm. these uh, animals and kids, and Animal basically, DNA. and yeah. like the notes and stuff that he he had put out <laughs> and stuff it was just really funny. Like, yeah, oh hey, look, it's starting to work. Okay, yeah, yeah wow, my my uh, tests are su- you know su- become successful, and then he's like, but. But I'm starting to care for them, you know. Yeah. That 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 won't work, you know. They gotta die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the basically Winnie the Pooh is basically his brother, grown right. up and like, uh, his brother. Billy. He, he's a he's a fucking mutant uh, by at this point, mm-hmm. and so is Owl and Tigger and yes. Piglet. Yes. By but for some I reason, there's that. another element that we find out at the end that they really can't die either. They can regenerate. Right. Yes. Right. They they t- they took some of that from uh, Pooh's Pooh's jar of honey. You know, instead <laughs> was this like g- yak or gak or whatever green. Uh, I don't know what owl juice that owl had. Yeah, it like, it's, it's funny. So like, if I was if I was really gonna complain about something, because of how you know just heavily it you know multiplied the cheese uh factor the camp of this is is when owl was talking which was so uh, i th- honestly think that was probably th- the most unnecessarily excessive <laughs> part of this fucking movie what what did that what did what, what, the fuck what, up. what did it remind you of by chance owl is talking what the owl that like, owl the or just no, owls? no the character um, um it makes me think of like the fucking like robin hood uh disney not disney uh movie with the, where they like they're all played by animals yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it mean, it makes me think of the 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 old, you know, obviously the Winnie the Pooh cartoon. Um, it it reminds me of like, like those old Disney villains that were birds, and I guess you can call it. Like, oh, you mean uh, like the Secret of Nim? Yeah, that. Where those, they have that <laughs> yeah. like fucking demonic looking goddamn old owl, <laughs> and and the voice too, just uh, like, oh, yeah, we should destroy all these people. No, it's all the kind of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, yeah. it it gets really heavy handed on the voice, which is but it's funny though. Mm. I think it's it works fairly well. But I mean, at, as far as the characters of a piglet and owl and all them, I mean, like owl is the the yapper of all of them, and uh, yeah. the very the very almost theatric one. You know, like whatever the when he lands, when he lands, very, he does that little, yeah, he's <laughs> he's very fucking dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like he, his lines are so fucking stupid, dude. I, I can't I'm not going to I can't remember any of them. But it just I just remember every time I I heard him talk, I was like, oh, you're so annoying, dude. Just shut up. Like you'd be like, yes, finally, we will return the suffering to them. Ha ha. Those who made us feel pain and like yeah. stuff and wouldn't accept us. He's just so fucking emo the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> 
but like yeah, angry and shit like yeah. so but it, you know it's but it's so, also the uh, way he says that we, we will return the suffering to them you know like yeah he's <laughs> so, his voice is dumb i hate it yeah <laughs> it's like any fucking like teenager you know learns to make like an evilish voice uh yeah, casting yeah. movie every time i hear that one that exact tone the i am i am whatever the shit destroyer of worlds like eh. It it annoys me, but it also makes me laugh because, like, again, that's like as camp as that gets. That exact one. It's like the fucking, you know, throwing the what is it? Uh, what are the names of those screams? The the uh, the obligatory screams that screams in every movie. Is it the Wilhelm? Yeah. And uh, this other one, I forgot the name of it. But anyways, like that kind of crap. Yeah, uh, it's 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 fun. They should have <laughs> just like modulated his voice or something. That would have been great. They they had a nice budget this time. Yeah, they did. I think it was like they was like f- how many? It was like fifty times the amount that they. So like the first Blood and Honey was was like I think was it two hundred thousand or five hundred thousand? Well, they got like they that. they had a flat one million this time, you know, and they had they I, had how much? They had one million. Oh, it was a mil- okay. It was a million. Sure. Yeah. I thought no, no, for this, for this one, for this one, and they, I, I feel that they you utilized the it. In front of you? I have the one million in front of me. As far as the uh, yeah, first yeah. one, I don't have those numbers. No, no, I'll go for it. Uh, so I mean, I, I think personally, when I again when I was watching this movie, I saw the budget mm-hmm. utilized fairly well, costuming, uh more uh gore stuff especially the costuming it was like a, a lot better and i think the just production overall yeah. was significantly better in this film so owl, owl looked pretty bad for the most part like it's it's weird he had these moments where it was kind of cool but then like the cg they used for him like i mean they i feel like they didn't really <laughs> they probably used the effects that came with the software i'll, I'll say that <laughs> uh because like there were parts where it's like you know you, you see well not parts but again like owl flying around it was just like oh this looks like a power rangers episode this is not good <laughs> but i mean it's not good but it's it is it's great trash um the practical effects i i i kind of liked quite a bit of them uh most not the effects excuse me um the uh uh, the costumes, uh, yeah, because they would do a thing on where with like Pooh's costume, he had like two or three different masks, right? Like the 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 normal sort of from a from a distance daylight mask that was kind of yellow and looked looked for the most part plas- you know, sort of plasticky rubbery, and then he had like the zoomed in, uh, horror fucking like Ren and Stimpy uh detail version with like the shark teeth and shit. And like the the blood soaked eyes or blood socket size, and do you did you did you see those like you saw those differences right? Yeah, as far as like it uh, was kind of nifty. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, the the way the like they the, would switch between like using different different uh, um, uh, masks on him kind of thing. Well, they which at I, first I I thought was was gonna look stupid, but. But then I saw Pooh were fucking running at, 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 on all fours in a down a fucking hallway, <laughs> and uh, remembered that uh, yeah, this this movie's fucking silly, <laughs> pretty goddamn silly. Yeah, I uh, I, I don't think wa- you know he wa- he went in there. I I don't think it took away from the silliness of the film. I mean, we obviously know what we're looking at, for one. Yeah. And I the the one the one thing yeah. I would say is that the movie did kind of jump around as far as like it trying to take itself too seriously, but also like implementing the silliness. Yeah. So it was kind of like just jumping uh in I guess various ways the tone of the film, which I, I personally don't mind. I, I don't mind it going from like trying to be mm-hmm. kind of serious and dramatic with the Christopher Robin story. Yeah, it's just like goofy as fuck. And then go to like the the killing the, the the crazy killings of the poo characters and Tigger and Piglet. Let's go to the murder rave. Yeah, <laughs> which was the uh, which and yeah. then like you know I'm thinking about it like I I I straight up think because like I laughed when Tigger talked <laughs> to people like you all hear is like what's up bitch <laughs> you gonna die bitch gonna get you bitch like and then now I'm just thinking about it like. You know, like watching him at the time, I was like, "Oh, it's it's fucking uh, f- uh, f- uh, Tigger uh, Cougar yeah. or, or whatever over here with his knife hands." 
but like now that i uh now that i think about it for a second like yeah the voice actually also sold it a lot too <laughs> it was just very stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his his and, his, uh, his bitch yeah. delivery was very Kruger esque, and it was very evident. Yeah. I... Um. So, let me see what else is a portion of this film that I want to talk about. Um, as far as like general pros of this movie, I thought the acting was pretty good. Uh, the story is obviously the weakest part, and I think that the effects yeah. are good. And I think that they used utilized their new budget fairly well, and I, I know I know it's not a good movie, I but I had a good time watching it. So that's as much as I could I knew I could get out of this movie because I knew the first one was really bad, and I had yes. low expectations for that. Yeah, it again, I had low expectations point. for this one, but I left uh, pleasantly mm-hmm. surprised. Uh, what about you, Roland? Uh, so. I knew this was going to be better just from this, like, uh, the first time I saw the poster for this, and it has Pooh holding a flaming chainsaw. <laughs> like, you know, which, as an effect, it didn't really turn out the best. Yeah. It was a, you know, pretty cool practical practical effect for the most part. Uh, they didn't quite, like, use it as, as well as I would hoped, but uh, it was still a shitload better uh, than, than uh, the first one. <laughs> um watching it for you know i yeah it uh oddly enough does drag somewhat when when it has the you know most of the di- the, the dialogue scenes um not not that that's bad uh in this particular sense it normally would be but because the movie's only an hour and a half i think it's you kind of need that that exposition when you can get it uh because uh yeah the uh obviously the best times are when the uh the goblins are on screen doing their ridiculous <laughs> yeah. dumb crap or monologuing or uh you know like uh terrorize just generally terrorizing people some of the kills were were pretty great and uh you know even as plain as they were still kind of like i liked <laughs> Uh, one in particular a lot was uh, when the mom gets taken out by Pooh. Yeah. She's just like looking down at the like they push her down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she's she she pulls she she opens up the dishwasher and looks down and like she's like t- tutting tut tutting at like because someone uh, which is nice a completely normal yeah. very casual like you know thing that people do and they they well in this case it just happened to be large butcher knives kitchen knives. Uh, but they put them upside down yeah. into the device, and so she's just there looking. And I'm like, oh, God damn it! I can't believe why you keep doing this. You and know, you know, you thing. know that's going to be used later on. And for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was exactly. very obvious. I mean, it yeah. was like within seconds. No, no. Well, I even, but right? even this is like, like even earlier in the film, like she opens the dishwasher and you oh, see him upside down. She's just like, shit, I don't remember. Oh, that. why do you all keep putting this down? He's not supposed to do that. And I'm just like, oh, just like. Yeah. But you're like, that obviously is going to be used on someone or someone later i didn't know oh i didn't i didn't i didn't i didn't know, like, was, oh, yeah, I didn't, exactly. I didn't know I his parents i didn't know dad. his parents were gonna get fucking like completely slaughtered you know? no yeah i think the dad just dies off <laughs> he screen, does yeah right? yeah sort of those are the budget budgetary Which restraints funny. he just <laughs> yeah um, that that that's that kill yeah. scene with the mom of them like pushing it and you see like the fucking knife going into her eye that 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 yeah. reminded me of that zombie movie, uh, wherever like the piece of wood's going into that girl's eye and it goes like real fucking slow. That I don't know mm-hmm. if that was a callback to that, but that's exactly what it reminded me of. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's only it's only ninety four minutes, so it's a pretty tight movie. It's yep. it's pretty solid, I think. And yeah, the budget on this one was five hundred grand. I thought it was uh, one million. Uh, or was it was it, well, it five hundred? Was it five hundred grand for the you. first one? Yeah. Uh. The. F- mm, no, you're right. Uh. Wait. No. I'm. Yeah. I am looking at the second one. I don't know. So let's just call it somewhere between. Let's say they had a budget of seven fifty. Well, they had a gross uh, of U- U.S. and Canada of five hundred thousand three hundred thirty five hundred thirty three thirty three thousand oh, okay. dollars. Uh, but uh, worldwide gross was like seven point five million. Well, seven point six really. Um, so but far, so they they I mean, that's good. Cool. So like now we get to get fucking Bambi the Reckoning, 
and the whatever Pinocchio movies mm-hmm. coming out. And then whenever they do the Puniverse, when all the characters come together and start just killing a bunch of fucking yeah, people. Yeah, fuck know? yeah. I want to see a versus. Let, let them fight. <laughs> 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 um, no, like that's... That sounds like a... a like it's going to be a, a fairly cool uh, little uh, a box set to look forward to at some point. Yeah, well that well that's going to be a very odd box set to have, you know. Um I I when when this yeah. movie came out after I saw it I actually did a single individual review, but I didn't like what mm. I did, so it was it's been sitting on my fucking computer in the fucking in Div- DaVinci Resolve for like the longest time. I think you told me. I did, me. yeah. And because I had asked you about it, like I was very fucking annoyed that I, I didn't get to watch the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I think you'd mentioned. Yeah, I, I done a working on one. You're just like, eh. yeah, I was just like, eh, I don't like what I did with it. So I just left it alone and I go, eh, I, I can wait. Yeah. And I, I want to do a review with uh, you speci- specifically because we, we saw it together, the, the first one. And I was like, it seems only yeah. right to like review the second one, even though because I mean, we had our thoughts of the first one and how bad that was. And I was just surprised enough to say, like, I wonder if you kind of found this a bit more enjoyable than the first one, because I know I did. And I a bit, a bit more than a bit. <laughs> yes. Uh, but like I had seen other reviewers talk about this movie and they just trash the shit out of this movie. Right. And I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's not good. It's a not a good movie. Like, what are you going in here with? Like, this is uh, expecting Les Miserables or some <laughs> shit. Like, give me a break. But that's that's the whole point. Is uh, one one of the complaints was the fact that um, tonally it was kind of uh, just jumped in and out of like the silliness and the comedy to like oh. uh, trying trying to be right. like take itself yeah. too seriously. Which again, I don't I don't personally don't mind. So that was okay for no, me. And because like then you had you it the, because like. It, I don't know. It was just so irritatingly well balanced in in all yeah, of it, I, I think in so, all yeah. those aspects. As as I had to suffer through the dialogue for the most yeah. part, like I was then rewarded with like Pooh's uh, ridiculous uh, uh, bear trap fucking weapon that he <laughs> just had to dramatically drag like ten feet uh, chain a ten foot chain behind him hauling this thing around uh, until finally he used it at the fucking rave. I mean, like he used it. I think two or three times yeah. by that by that stage but that was the best time when he just like uses it like a like a fucking scorpion spear and whips this girl <laughs> and like rips her head off and then grand slams it for some fucking reason he just happens to have a stick he a lead pipe that he just wants to use yeah, like a baseball like that that part was explodes. fucking ridiculous she's just running through the whole crowd and then he throws yeah, it and it's cold. slow motion <laughs> rips off her fucking head and then he's he's fucking sitting there amongst the crowd with a fucking pipe and just yeah knocks it out. I was like, dude, let's go, bro. This is gonna park. be stupid. Let's go. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> yeah, dumb, 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 dumb stupid shit all around. It. But I loved it. Yes, uh, it's right, right up my alley. Almost, almost a bit trauma esque. You know, uh, not not fully because I mean, it gets very it, dramatic. It, but absolutely, yeah. I would say a little bit more. Um, what was it the the next the next scene or so or one of the next uh, ones? kind of jumped a little into like terrifier uh territory as far as like the levels of gore when he saws that girl's yeah neck, uh, head off very slowly you yeah kind of like and she's there like doing a little twitch thing and and you know do, doing the death uh the roach twitch or whatever the hell it's called <laughs> and uh i like that too even though yeah. it was kind of like mm, okay um and then like he just like i guess sort of gets fed up or tired when he just straight up uh goes to the next girl to kill her with his bare hands just like what is he like crush her skull or twist her neck or break her neck something, something. like that yeah i don't remember that one too well um but anyways like right after that scene he starts doing the fucking like trauma gallop style bullshit down the hallway uh after a group of people <laughs> was this like uh i don't know it was he, he looked like a giant murder muppet like <laughs> <laughs> um it made me think of like if you know the five nights of freddy's series was was moved up to rated r kind of in some moments so like, that, okay. that that would have been interesting for that one for sure um yeah man well something to look forward to maybe though yeah. 
So I'll go for it. Later Just want to go over some uh, trivia for the, the movie. The next one is supposed to come up in like, yeah. What do you got? I I just want to go over some trivia for this movie. So uh, we mentioned that the yeah. Pooh and Piglet really cannot die, and that comes out in, in the mid credit right. scene. Uh, we show that they be, begin to regenerate. Uh, it shows a series of sketchings and showing the characters of the other. Again, if you had, I don't I don't I don't know if you saw that, uh, but like uh, midway, you see the twisted childhood universe is what they're calling it. Also, it's Bambi the Reckoning, right, Peter Pan's okay. Neverland Nightmare, Pinocchio Unstrung, yeah. and. Again, it's 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 crossover uh, with Puniverse Monsters Assembly. That's <laughs> that's the movie that's yeah. coming out. <laughs> um, I had forgot. Yeah, because they're gonna do like an Avengers thing. <laughs> and it it also shows uh, again with the backstory of this of this film is that uh, Pooh and all the other characters were never like nice, cuddly little things. They were always very feral, uh, very almost mm-hmm. bad persons. And we find out, of course. Uh, it was Christopher Robin's brother who was actually Pooh, and like, hence why they're always so mm-hmm. pissed off all the time because they're they they, they, they have yeah. their families abandoned them. I think. Well, they forgot. They pretty much just like left them because I mean they just like left them for dead. Pretty much is what it was, and now yeah. they have to come and like fend for themselves, and they're a bunch of freaks, you know. So mm-hmm. there's that, and uh, I, I talked about uh, f- footage from the the first Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Um, is uh, being shown. Uh, they're actually watching that movie on screen, and again, th- hence the whole meta aspect of this movie. But uh, it's yeah, it's, uh, I, it's I I enjoyed this a lot more than I did the first one, like significantly. Uh, but as far as ratings is concerned of this movie, um, I would give it a solid three out of five. And I'm pretty sure the first one I gave like a 1.5 out of just ridiculousness. Again, that one didn't even like, it wasn't as enjoyable. It didn't even make us laugh personally. It was just like, no, this is just dumb. Like it was, was just really stupid, you know? This one had more laughs. Yeah, and, that's, and yeah. that was the whole reason that we, we went to see it. Like, yep, this is as dumb as, as we could have expected. Yeah, this one had more laughs, more gore, more uh, budget, more budget. So like it was shown on screen and I appreciated that. Uh, that they didn't seem to waste. They, they spent more time. Yeah, I, I I didn't feel like there was time wasted. Yeah. Again, it's a tight ninety what ninety four minutes, so that was good Something also. Like so that. and it, and it moved along fairly quickly for me personally. Um, I didn't feel it dragging too much, even though like there's some lull moments mm-hmm. while with her Christopher Robbins exploring his uh his tragedy, his trauma, and all that kind of stuff. But um, I enjoyed it. Three out of five for me. What about you, Roland? Uh. So uh, as you say that, I was just remembering the uh, scene uh, he has when he confronts the janitor, <laughs> the big, yeah. the big, the big, uh, the big villain, and then he just gives him this entire long one. Well, he's the messenger. He's not really like you know. He's not really technically the villain. And then so. <laughs> just he just like burns all the the evidence or leftover stuff that was there, and he's like, "Well, it's your problem yeah. now." Kong just kills <laughs> yeah. himself. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Just like, wow. Yeah, you guys are really gonna go with that, huh? Yeah. Well, okay. that's 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 what I'm saying. <laughs> I guess that answers all those they, questions. They actually just went to these different places in this movie, which I wasn't expecting because one was so like seriously like, one dimensional. They tried to go mm-hmm. more layered on this one, and I appreciate that. Uh, was it entirely successful? No, but I mean, like, I don't expect uh, some kind of a uh, great uh, was- narrative in this film, like. I know what I'm getting, and as long as I, if well, I get a little I mean, bit more, no, that's fine. Exactly. It's just a cherry on top for me. It was pretty funny though. I mean, to like to have this one guy who apparently uh, was responsible for a, a kidnapping a number of kidnappings yeah. for be given this like a huge goddamn monologue, and it's just like, all right, you know what, buddy, do every and act everything you can because you have a shitload to talk about. <laughs> like, and so you see the guy go from like fear to like acceptance to just like for like weird kind of twisted forgiveness and like relief and Ex- yeah whatnot. acceptance like, is so the he, last one when he like pops you know, himself he, you know <laughs> yeah. he goes to the seven stages of grief right before uh, our eyes in like less than like two minutes and with like, the with uh, uh you don't understand boy the last uh, step is a i used to gamble yeah. 
I was a gamble, boy, and, and I owed a lot. Of, I owed people a lot of money, <laughs> and so this guy was like, "Hey, take some kids for me, you know, and I'll, I'll pay you. I'll yeah. help you. I'll make your debt go away." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, is that this all? seems reasonable." Yeah. Okay, and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You'll be. F- well, did you ever find out about those kids? And you, you kind of expect, and I think he kind of says actually, he's like, "I didn't really know." Yeah, what was he just gonna pretty much to gave it to them. I was, was like, "Dude," and then all of a sudden he's like those kids were being experimented <laughs> on like he just goes into this huge fucking like dialogue about uh it, you know how long he apparently helped this guy out and what happened and <laughs> yeah oh and it was fucking hilarious and uh i did laugh like out loud at that like quite a few times <laughs> that I remember yeah. and I was kind of, I was a little like pleasantly surprised if I was going to say I was pleasantly surprised by some of the things it's that like yeah there were quite a few things that I laughed at at this which uh which is which kind of I mean has has me looking forward to uh more of the yeah. movies more more of the uh more stuff in this series uh I'd forgotten about the Peter Pan uh <laughs> uh not um I don't know what kind of Peter Pan's uh, Peter Pan's what, a the, nightmare the, the yeah. yeah okay um when's the next one coming out was it is it next year no I, I you know i don't know when the next one is coming out i mean they seem to be cranking these out at least maybe every, once a year because i mean like every, every every other year i mean or they or i mean like the way it looks like we'll be getting them every other year i, I actually such, i think i think i think cool. bambi's cool. coming out this year yeah oh fuck it. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, we may sooner or later, sooner than later, get a Bambi: The Reckoning of the the Puniverse. So, like, I'm down to watch it. It's gonna be fucking dumb as shit, and I'm here for it. You know, I'll give this like a two point seven. Two point seven. Like, right. You know, like for for their budget and what they did with it, I was like, all right, yeah, this this was a like a a, a huge improvement over the first one easily. But like, as far as what I expect, um. This kind of makes me think if like sci-fi or the CFE channel had had like their own kind of like rated R studio. I'm kind of curious what Lloyd Kaufman would which, do with like a property like this and a budget like this. Because I know he ain't getting a million dollars. Yeah. You know? I think the no. last time he got a million dollars probably for like. Mm, Kabuki Man. Kabuki. Yeah. Well, Kabuki Man. Yeah. He probably million. got like more money for that. And then I was like, and we saw what he did with that shit. <laughs> I think it was his record at the time. I don't know if it stayed in his highest. Yeah. Uh, we saw, we saw, we saw cost. what he did with the, the Kabuki Man movie and the budget they gave us. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Go. Yeah. Fucking go. Um, I don't know. That would be pretty cool. If you like this video, All please right. like and subscribe. Again, what did you think about Winnie the Pooh button, Honey 2? Are you anticipating for the next uh entry in the puniverse because i am i know roland is too so yeah man well it's good stuff we'll see you next time on our next review and uh hopefully it's another fun garbage piece of trash like this next time Mm -hmm. goodbye good stuff see you